good to be here at the top of the hour to talk about my favorite subject, which is the Wheel of Freedom, because that is what's even more important than the Wheel of Fear, right? So the Wheel of Freedom is way more important than the Wheel of Fear. Not that the Wheel of Fear isn't important because it is, but I want you to have the antidote to the Wheel of Fear. And that's where the Wheel of Freedom comes in. So, Shall we talk about the Wheel of Freedom? Mm, mm, mm. That's right, because it is time to talk about the second part of the Wheel of Freedom. Now, remember, in our previous episodes, we have been talking about the Wheel of Fear, and we've gone through the four parts of the Wheel of Fear. First part is the trigger, and that is by far the most difficult to find because your Wheel of Fear does not want to be found. That's why we work with coaches and in classes so that we can actually support each other to get the best one. Because trust me, if you don't get support, you're gonna, wheel of fear is gonna pick your wheel of fear, right? So the trigger is the most important part of that. Now I've asked you to do homework about the fear responses. So you start seeing your behavior because awareness is the key. Because once you start seeing your behavior, you're gonna be able to hop onto the wheel of freedom, right? And then from the wheel of fear, from the fear responses, you go down to core negative, which is the feeling you do not want to feel, the feeling you do not want to feel, which then of course, if you feel that feeling and you know, you and you and I both know that you felt that feeling, it dumps you right in to your self-destructive behaviors, which then proves once again, how you have to hide out. That trigger has got to not be seen. You cannot have that shown. So as I shared with you a few episodes ago, there are four places to get off the wheel of fear and into the wheel of freedom. So that's what we've been doing yesterday. We started off with the essential nature and I shared mine with you, authentic. And now we are going to be talking about our next aspect of our wheels, which is the proactive behaviors. So proactive behaviors, number two, number two, number two, number two. So essential nature, remember wheel of fear is righty tighty. Wheel of Freedom's Lefty Lucy, right? Wheel of Fear is righty tighty. Wheel of Freedom's Lefty Lucy. So we go this way on the Wheel of Freedom to loosen ourselves up, to move ourselves into our most powerful place, to give ourselves some freedom to create, to live our lives that are soul intended. That's the motto of Fearless Living. We want, I want you to live the life your soul intended, as does every single person inside Fearless Living. So proactive behaviors, like what the heck are those? Well, proactive behaviors are where you start making choices based on, well, do you want to do it based on your essential nature or are you going to keep doing automatic response, i.e. their fear responses? So this is where we get to take our power back, right? So think about it for a minute. Let's say that I walk into a room, say I walk into a room and I'm nervous, right? And I, maybe I don't know anybody. And this actually has happened to me many a time. I actually have one fond memory of a very difficult uh, event I went to. I had just come out of my dark night and this is the first party I went to and I knew I needed to go even though I'd been in basically seclusion for three years and I didn't know any of these people. So, you know, I don't know any of these people. I've been out of the loop for three years. How do you think I might've felt? I was nervous. That's what I was, I was nervous, right? So. I said to myself, well, if my wheel of fear picks my decision, remember, don't want to be loser. Definitely not going to go to the party because I don't want that feeling to come up. I don't want to feel worthless. I don't want to be with a bunch of people that don't know me, a bunch of people that, you know, never saw me on TV and don't know that I'm a coach and, you know, oh my God, this is going to be horrible. And they're all younger than me. And I was convinced of that, right? I started making up stories because remember the brain doesn't know the difference between your imagination and reality. So I started making up things, right? So my wheel of fear, my loser, remember my trigger's loser. If it would have decided for me, I definitely would not have gone. And if I did go, let's say I did go, how do you think I would have been at that party? I would have been discombobulated, right? I would have been like, I'm just waiting for people to ignore me. I'm just waiting for people to reject me. I'm looking for people to reject me. I would have gone, oops, that's my alarm to get on with you. Look at that. I set my alarm every day to make sure I don't miss you. 
but clearly I said it incorrectly because it's at 504 instead of five. And that's okay because I'm on my wheel of freedom. If I was on my wheel of fear in that moment, what would I have thought? Oh God, I can't believe I forgot to turn off the alarm, right? So when we're on our wheel of fear, God, I'm so dumb, I can't, forgot to turn off my wheel of fear, my, my alarm, right? Oh, it's so embarrassing, oh my God. No, nope, just forgot to turn off my wheel of my, my alarm because I'm being authentic, right? I'm being authentic. I'm telling you the truth of what's going on with me. So when I went to that party and my wheel of fear totally wanted to be in charge, absolutely 100%, I said to myself, you know what? I am going to practice living on my wheel of freedom in this situation. That's what I do. And so what would authentic do? What would I be doing at this event if I was being authentic? And what proactive behaviors can I take that support me being authentic? So proactive behaviors can be just about anything. And there's gonna be ones that you lean on the most. You know, again, taking a breath is a proactive behavior. Um, acknowledging yourself is a proactive behavior. Going to get a massage is a proactive behavior. Uh, you know, taking care of your health is a proactive behavior. So anything that supports you in being willing to do this, right? So my proactive behaviors must support me in being authentic. So. One of my proactive behaviors. Now, remember I shared with you that my throat chakra is the first one that shuts down when I'm, when I'm on my wheel of fear, it just shuts down. For years and years and years, I would lose my voice every year. My parents died in June. I would lo lose, it, lose it right after Mother's Day. And so there's Mother's Day in May, of course, and Father's Day in June, so that month. And then my parents died on Father's Day. The minute Mother's Day would end, those next three weeks, four weeks, somewhere in there, I would lose my voice. Think about it, I would lose my voice. And I did that for a decade plus. So one of my proactive behaviors is to speak up. Uh, and I have to speak up authentically. I have to tell the truth. So do you think I've had to learn how to communicate better, being a proactive behavior to be authentic? Yes. Do I have to tell people how I feel? Yes. Do I have to tell them what's going on inside of me? Yes. Do I have to admit my needs and wants if I'm gonna be authentic? Yes. Do I have to live my dream or I'm on my wheel of fear? Yes. So again, your proactive behaviors are gonna be different than mine. Maybe some crossover, but my proactive behaviors could be calling my best friend Marta, taking a breath, going for a walk, it could be a massage, it could be Reiki, it could be uh, you know, putting essential oils on, like all of the things that make me centered in myself, whatever, whatever you believe, whatever supports you, but all your proactive behaviors have to support your essential nature. So if I do a proactive behavior, it has to make me and, and allow me to be more authentic, more true to myself. So whenever I, Rhonda Britton, am discombobulated, I guarantee you, it's because I'm trying to split hairs. I'm not really being my full self. I am not, I'm not being myself, my true self, my fearless self, not my fearful self. I think about the first time I spoke in a room, spoke in a group. I thought before I spoke, I thought before I was a speaker, I had to speak like this. Hi, my name is Rhonda Britton. How are you? Yes, let me look at you, my board. I would have never shown this messy board trying to be perfect, right? Perfect. You can't have a messy board. Can't have a messy board. Well, you know how I work best is I work best in the moment. Got to be messy, right? But if I was on my wheel of fear, I could never have this like this. I would have printed it out. I would have calligraphied it perfectly. I would have had it all prepared, right? I would have made it beautiful. That's what I would have done if I was on my wheel of fear. But on my wheel of freedom, I can just be with you. Me and you can be together right now and we can hang and I can write my messy self and I can practice being authentic, okay? So uh, Melinda says, Melanie says, I realize I must find reasons that are going to help me enjoy a better life to push through fear. Yeah, reasons, and, and it's not just reasons. I mean, yes, it's reasons, I get that. But really what it is, is your essential nature, Mel Mel Melanie, because I remember, so remember what we talked about in last episode about the essential nature. 
it is the thing that you have not been able to express, the thing that you cannot have when you're triggered. So as I shared before, I had to shove my authenticity down because being authentic was not supported, not loved, not admired, not cared about, not respected, nothing. Now, am I just authentic all the time, every single day, every, every single moment, 24 seven today? No. Am I, do I practice being authentic? Yes. Are there times that fear is still in control? Yes. But this is the difference. I know what to do. So when I get triggered, I notice a fear response or I get down to my core negative feeling and I immediately know, Rhonda, where are you not being authentic? Maybe I haven't said something I need to say. Maybe I haven't asked for something that I want. Maybe I haven't told somebody, I had a difficult conversation with somebody. Maybe I haven't honored my own speed. Maybe I haven't respected myself and self-care. But I guarantee you, if I'm triggered, it's because I'm not doing this. So this is how you're going to feel, Melanie, when you get your essential nature. First of all, you're not going to believe me. Because you'll say to yourself, well, what do you mean authentic? I can be authentic. Well, again, remember, you can be authentic or again, whatever your essential nature is when you're in freedom. But I'm talking about the places in your life where fear has you. Right. So where does fear, what part of your life does fear have you? Because I guarantee you, whatever your essential nature is, goes into hiding because it's not safe. So we want to use our proactive behaviors to support that moving forward. And Melanie, I promise you, promise you, promise you, promise you that as you embrace your essential nature and as you because it's going to be when you when you find your essential nature, you're going to be like, oh, oh, my God, could I? Could I? Oh, my God, could I? That's how I felt. It's like, could I? Could I really be authentic? No, it's too dangerous to be authentic. Yeah, but Rhonda, the only way to be free is to be authentic. <gasps> right? That was exciting, nerve wracking, hopeful. So I promise you that when you start identifying your wheel of fear and wheel of freedom, you're going to have a very big reason to start breaking through fear because you're going to start getting the benefits very quickly about what it feels like to be in freedom. Fear tells us lies. Yes, keeps us stuck when it may not even be the case. I realize Melanie says I can choose to find an easier way to make it happen. Yeah, you know, fear totally lies to us. Now it doesn't, it's not lying to be mean. It's just lying to trick us because it loves us, right? Fear loves us. Fear loves you, fear loves me, and it's just trying to keep us safe. And it'll use all your knowledge, all your spirituality, all your education, everything you've ever done and everything you ever know against you, right? The more spiritual you get, the more spiritual fear gets. Ever, ever meet somebody that has, uh, that meditates an hour a day and is still a jerk? Yeah. Why are they a jerk? Because they're on their wheel of fear when they're meditating. Meditation, again, I love meditation. I meditate, believe in it. Yet some people meditate for fear reasons, not freedom reasons, right? And then that meditation lasts only so long and they go back into fear and they think that just because they meditated that somehow they, they're more evolved, right? So your fear literally uses everything it knows against you to keep you safe. It's not doing it to, to punish you. It's just keeping you safe. So yeah, fear lies to you. And the fact is, is you believed it just like I believed it. And remember, we've talked about the brain and our neural pathways right? So our neural pathways get stronger. You know, those that wire together, you know, kind of they bond together, right? They're the ones that get stronger. So we have got to interrupt the neural pathway and choose a different path. And this is it, my friend. And when you learn your wheel of fear and wheel of freedom, you are going to see your life through very different lenses. So I guess, I think the one thing that everyone says to me is like, oh my gosh, I know why I've done everything I've done. I know why I've avoided things. I know why I broke up. I know why I got married. I know why I got divorced. I know why I went to college. I know why I didn't go to college. I know why I quit that job. I know why I took that job. So everything will start making sense instead of you being confused on why you behave this way or, you know, why do I do this? Like that question, why do I do this? Will be eliminated. Now think about that. Why am I like this? Why am I like this? Oh my God, my whole life I asked myself that until I figured this out, right? Um, 
so anybody else have anybody have questions about this because what is what are any questions about your proactive behavior so we want to move from authentic and we want to use our proactive behaviors and then what we're going to do tomorrow in our next episode we're going to talk about number three and the day after that we're going to talk about number four okay so let's see melanie says wow that's amazing truth to hear you thank you that's great golden nugget i must rewatch this to cement the truth yes you must I can't wait to embrace my new freedom path, Melanie says. I agree with you. You are awesome. Thank you so much. Tiffany says, I can relate to all of this. This is amazing. Can you have multiple fears? Seem like there might be only a few fears. So, so when you go back and watch the episode about the fear responses, remember, you want as many fear responses as possible. So that's why it feels like multiple fears because you have multiple fear responses, but you only have one core fear. So I want you to imagine that there's, here, let me see if I, let's see if I can draw. So so those are three flowers. Those are three flowers, right? And how do flowers grow? They grow based on the root, right? There is a root there. That is just like you. This is your trigger. It is the root. Like people say, oh, I have that negative belief, right? I have that belief. Yeah, yeah, you have beliefs, but they don't, beliefs don't come first, triggers come first, right? And then beliefs start influencing your behaviors, right? Because your beliefs are formed by your trigger. So it's great to do belief work, that's awesome but it's not really going down to the core, down to the trigger, okay? So then this is what you do, right? Fear, this is the wheel of fear. You've got your trigger and maybe this is people pleasing. Right, maybe the first flower is people pleasing and maybe the second flower is anxiety. Second flower is anxiety and maybe the third is procrastination. Right, so the trigger has things blossom, procrastination, people pleasing, complaining, comparing, blaming, frustration, right? Anger, justification of why you're the way you are, excuses. And so you have people pleasing, you have anxiety and procrastination on this one. So let's say you go to procrastination school and you know, you're so good at procrastination school, yeah, cut procrastination at the root. Ha ha, I have now solved my procrastination problem. Ha ha, I have won. Well, okay, maybe you don't procrastinate anymore. Okay, good for you. But fear doesn't care because what will happen is your trigger will just create a new flower. It doesn't care. It doesn't care if you procrastinate or your people pleaser, it doesn't care. So you can solve this one problem, good for you, by the way, great but it will just form a different problem. I mean, think about your life. Have you ever thought to yourself, I thought I solved this. I can't believe I'm doing this again. Have you ever said to yourself, I can't believe I'm doing this again. It's because the wheel of fear just goes round and around and around. And you think you're getting better at it, getting more sophisticated with it, getting smarter than it. But if you don't get down to the root, if you don't get down to the root, you're never gonna be able to go over here you're never gonna get freedom the way that's true freedom. You might have freedom, like I said before, if you have 12 areas of life, you might be free already right now, today. You might, have the, you might live on the wheel of freedom already right now in three to five to 10 areas of your life. But I guarantee you, you have one, two or more areas of your life that you are in fear. And we want you to get on your wheel of freedom so that you can experience it more and more and more. Um, uh, let's see. Melanie says, you're so good at this. Inspiring work. You're welcome. You're welcome. Thank you. So questions, comments, or thoughts, because tomorrow we are going to work on number three. So again, remember on the wheel of fear, you can interrupt it at any time. And every time you interrupt the wheel of fear, you are going to go right here to your essential nature, that thing that's been denied you, the thing you've denied yourself. And you are going to start practicing this by using proactive behaviors, okay? And your proactive behaviors are gonna be similar to mine, maybe different than mine, but we work on that together. So don't worry about that. You don't have to figure it out by yourself. Um, 
never thought of fears mutating. Oh my God, fears totally mutate. I mean, think about it. Think about, I mean, I think about my relationships that I've had, you know, in the past. Um, I would think that I'm through, you know, like, oh, I don't have to be with men like that anymore. I'll be with this new man, right? But the new man would end up being kind of like the old man, even though he looked better or maybe made more money or had a better job or sounded more enlightened, kind of the same still, right? Because when I was younger, I couldn't see my wheel of freedom. I was not free in my relationships. I was in relationships in fear, right? All right, so questions, comments, or thoughts. What do you have about this before we complete for the day? Because we're just gonna do one, two, three, and four, and then we have so many other things to cover. Questions, comments, thoughts? Questions, comments, thoughts? Romy says, what if you don't know what your root is? Well, you won't, Rom Romy. You won't know what your root is. Um, you have to discover that. And that's why I've created exercises. So you can figure out your trigger uh, using my book, Fearless Living, and doing it with a friend. Don't do it by yourself. You probably won't get the right one with the best one. Um, it says, I find that sometimes I do bad, risky things so that I have a reason why things are not working out in my life because I don't know what the root cause is. Yeah, I mean, so did I. Look, I became an alcoholic, tried to kill myself, and got a bunch of DUIs, right? So sure, I did bad things to justify why I was where I was, right? So I created behaviors to prove that I did deserve the punishment or I did deserve to lose or I did deserve to, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, whatever it was. So I want to clean up your language, Romy, that you are not doing bad things. You are not doing bad things. You're here, this is you, your essential nature, that's you. But the wheel of fear convinces you to do bad things. The wheel of fear tricks you into bad things because it seems logical at the time and it seems like the best choice at the time. But you're not making a choice based on your essential nature. You're making choices based on your wheel of fear. So yeah, what do you? What if you don't know what the root is? That's what this whole works about. I'm going to help you come up with your wheel of fear and wheel of freedom, but you have to meet me, right? I can only share it with you and then you have to do the exercises and then work with a coach and don't worry, like I said, I'm gonna share something with you on Monday that's gonna support you in helping, getting help in order to work with coaches, in order to get your wheels, right? Because I want you to work with somebody who knows how to help you get your wheels, right? So again, you can do it in the book, sure. Make sure you do it with a friend, tell yourself the truth, don't let yourself get tricked. And I'd really love you to work with a coach and or uh, one of my coaches, one of the certified field living coaches are the only ones that are trained to do it. And we're gonna put you through a series of exercises because we have to trick fear because fear doesn't wanna be found. So we're gonna trick it through a series of exercises. And trust me, I've been doing this for over 25 years. So I know how to trick fear. We do not go through the front door with fear, right? Like, you know how they say, feel the fear, do it anywhere, or false evidence appear or face your fear, right? Again, those are all lovely. They're all cliches, they're all true. Yet in Wheel of Fear and Wheel of Freedom, we don't do opposite. So if you're afraid to be a loser, notice my essential nature is not winner, okay? So you know how they say, just do the opposite? No, don't do the opposite. If you do the opposite, you're just doing a better version, but you're still in fear. So notice my trigger that I shared with you in the, a few episodes ago is loser. Again, notice my essential nature is not winner. So we don't do opposites here in fearless living because that's basically the other side of the coin of fear. So we're not gonna get tricked that way. We actually, I like to say, go in the side door. We go in the side door and we trick fear. Yes, we do. Um, Lori says, makes me understand my past. Uh, yes, your past will be crystal clear. I mean, I can't tell you, I just can't say it enough. I mean, everyone says like, oh my gosh, now I understand why I did that. Uh, Tiffany said, would trying to let bad memories go, would that be on the mend on the wheel of freedom? Yeah. So Tiffany, that might be a proactive behavior, right? That might be a proactive behavior. Um, I had a nightmare last night. I had a nightmare last night. And, uh, you know, a few episodes ago, somebody was asking me about nightmares. And I, they said, Do you, are you, you know, are people having bad dreams or nightmares during this global pandemic? And I said, sure, of course they are, depending on, depending on the way you work, right? And I had a nightmare last night, but remember what I said about nightmares is I believe that they're helping us work out all of the things that we're trying to work out on our human plane, on this human reality, 
but in our sleep. So we don't have to experience all that anxiety, all that worry, all that fear. It actually is working out during our dream. So this morning, I'm gonna, okay, I held it. Okay, I always itch my nose, I just do. Somebody's thinking about me. Okay. Um, so going back to uh, Tiffany's, um, letting go, releasing, forgiving are all proactive behaviors. Acknowledgements, gratitudes, uh, the four A's, the risk formula, all the things that we teach you in fearless living, all of those things are proactive behaviors. So a lot of good work out there. There's a lot of good work that people do like Reiki, um, tapping, you know, any of those things are proactive behaviors, but in and of themselves, they don't actually help you start moving into essential nature and don't start helping you say bye-bye to your trigger, bye-bye to your root, right? So again, they're all wonderful and good. Therapy, reading books, going to workshops, awesome. But you have to know what's behind your behavior, what's behind that action, right? Is it that you're doing it from your wheel of fear or you're doing it from your wheel of freedom? And you will know that, I promise you. You're gonna really get good at going, oh, I see, I wanna do this and I'm on my wheel of fear. Oh, I wanna do this and it's on my wheel of freedom. You're gonna start really understanding how to take better actions, how to make better choices, because you're gonna know where that choice is coming from, okay? Um, uh, Tiffany says, my sister-in-law is training to be a coach. Awesome. Lynn says, coaching with fly coaches is totally life-changing. Yes, it is. Um, Melanie says, tricks must be creative process for I have to get clever to come over my triggers. It's sneaky, these fears, subtle too. Yeah, yeah, but you know, that's the point. It's like, you don't have to be clever. You just have to know your path, right? So you don't have to outwit it, so to speak. By doing this, you will outwit it, right? You'll naturally outwit it. So you don't have to like think I have to outwit it. No, no. If you just do this, it will be outwitted. That's the cool part. Um, does reframing things help fears? Sure. Of course, this does reframe. Remember the other day when we were talking about the wheel of fear and the wheel of freedom. So let's say these are my wheel of fear glasses. Let's say these are my wheel of fear glasses. And let's say these are my wheel of freedom glasses, right? Now, remember what neuroscience says, that the only way to truly change your life is to change your filtering system. It doesn't say beliefs. It doesn't say your thoughts. It doesn't say your feelings. It doesn't say your actions. None of that. The number one way to change your life is with your filtering system. And that's exactly what we do in fearless living. So again, imagine this is my wheel of fear and I'm looking out in my world. I'm looking at a relationship. I'm looking at my money. I'm looking at my career. I'm looking at my life. I'm looking at my family, my friends. I'm looking through my wheel of fear. What am I going to see? This person doesn't like me. Oh, I have to shut up around that person. Um, that person's weird, right? Like I'm looking through a particular lens. Now, when we know how to move from our wheel of fear to our wheel of freedom, now we have our freedom glasses on and that same situation may be happening, but we see it completely different and that's reframing, right? So we're reframing the situation from a fear filter to a freedom filter. So imagine, remember I talked about the party I went to. If I was in my fear filter, right? Oh, by the way, Jezebel's trying to come over here and make nice to me because you know what she did today? She got a mouse and brought it in the house and I saw her do it. And so I was like, no, no, no. And so thank goodness gracious, uh, whenever she does that, many times she drops it in the house and then I have to go get it. This time she took it out with her. Yay. She like had it in her mouth and I was like, oh, out of there. And she ran with it. And then she found a little um, gecko, a little gecko. Yes, so she had a lot of fun outside today, finding little animals to have fun with. Jezebel, Jezebel. Okay, back to the party. If I went to the party, remember, and I was wearing my wheel of fear glasses, I would be paranoid, looking for rejection, wondering what was gonna happen. Do those people like me? Are they smiling at me? <sighs> right? But if I go to the party and I have my wheel of freedom lens is on, I'm approaching this situation from a completely different way. It is a reframe. So yes, you're gonna learn how to reframe in a big way. 
Um, I had a nightmare last night. Lynn says it was cray cray. Yeah, me too. Romy says, I believe you. I'm a huge fan of yours, but I do keep lapsing because Romy, Romy, do you have your wheel of fear and wheel of freedom? Um, and she goes, by the way, it's 124 in the morning here. I'm working, which is the only reason I'm still awake. Well, hopefully you're awake with me right now. Peggy says, pretty sure I lived my entire life in fear, unsure how to feel safe. Yeah, I get that, Peggy. I definitely lived the first 35 years of my life in complete fear. Didn't even know it either. That's the thing. I thought I was brave. You know, I thought I was, I thought I was fearless back then, which was so not fearless, but I would do risky things. You know, I would do, I would be the risk taker and people uh, falsely believe that taking risks, you know, those bad risks that somebody set up here, uh, Romy said, you know, when you take quote unquote bad risks, right? Like, oh, I can drive my car drunk, right? Oh, I'm so, see, I'm so smart. I'm so risky, right? But when you're in it, you think you're being so risky. But in fact, that was all based in fear, right? So people will come up to me and say, well, I'm pretty fearless already. I go, really? Tell me about it. And they go, well, I jump out of planes and I, you know, climb mountains and I, you know, and I go, that's awesome. That sounds like you are physically a risk taker, physically in your body, you take risks. And then I always ask, so how are your relationships? Can you say, I love you? Can you forgive somebody? Can you let go? Can you release? Can you, you know, and they always look at me like, what? I go, yeah, just because you can jump out of a plane does not make you fearless. It makes you physically fearless, doesn't make you emotionally fearless, right? So that's what we want to be. We want to be emotionally fearless so that we can go anywhere, do anything, meet anyone. Um, Kelly says, a lot of times I didn't realize that I'm on my wheel of fear until later. Boy, does that fear just love that? Yeah, absolutely. And it's going to take you, some things you're going to notice right away. Like right away, you're going to notice the wheel of fear and other things are more tricky. And that's just going to take time. Tiffany says, wheel of freedom equals positive change. Absolutely. Um, Melanie says, good insight, which thought we allow to rule our choices, fear or freedom. That's right. Angie says, I want to be in the store. I went to the store for the first time in a month yesterday. I finally wasn't afraid. Congratulations, Angie. Um, all right. Excellent. Somebody else is saying, enjoying the lesson. Fantastic. Melanie says, what you tell yourself really matters. And that's why one of the things that we work on in Fearless Living is your language. What comes out of your mouth? Because you tell, you talk to me, you tell me, well, I can hear you. I can hear your fear out of your mouth. And that's why a coach is going to support you in coming up with your best wheels, because they're going to hear you too. In your exercises and working with you one-on-one -on, -one on the phone, they're going to be able to support you and hear what you may not be hearing, because we have a hard time looking at ourselves with, uh, with realistic eyes, right? So any other questions, comments, or thoughts before we complete for the day? Okay, so we want to move from our wheel of fear to our wheel of freedom, get to our essential nature. And in our essential nature, we're going to take proactive behaviors that align with our essential nature. So now we're more in alignment with who we really are, what the truth is about us. Because I know me and Romy did not do bad or risky things in freedom. We did bad, risky things in fear. All right. So remember, what do I always want at the end of every episode? I want to know the number one thing that you got out of today. What's the number one thing that you got out of today? The number one thing that you got out of today. So I want to hear from you. The number one thing you got out of today, make sure that you write that down in the comments below. I go back and read those. So keep writing those down, the number one thing. And meet me back here tomorrow because we're going to do number three. Okay. So I am knowing that right here and right now, that life is unfolding most magn magnificently for you. I'm knowing that the work that we're doing together right here and right now is going to support you and is supporting you right now. I'm knowing that the wheel of freedom is, is seeping into your soul and starting to create roots there, not the fear roots, but the freedom roots so that you can live a more aligned embodied life and feel more alive, feel that spark within you and really move towards to live the life your soul intended. That's my wish for you and I know that you may be doing it on some level and maybe you're doing it a lot in some area, but I want you to know that you're, you have permission to live the life your soul intended always and in all ways, okay? So I look forward to the next time. Be fearless, be fearless, be fearless, be fearless. See you tomorrow.